So welcome to our Thursdays uh, for health and wellness. Uh, we are here today to have a cooking demonstration and really looking forward to this, our first uh, venture into something new. So I will allow, uh, turn this over to Yuruj Rios, who is our nutritionist for the Breast Center and have her do the introductions. Everyone, I am Uruj, the dietitian for the Breast Center, um, and I have the honor of introducing our executive chef, Effie Neufeld. Effie was born and raised in Nigeria by Greek parents. She went to the school in Athens, Greece. Um, she has won many, several awards um, in international culinary um, or like festivals and stuff, and she has um, have gotten some um, awards for some different recipes in many in the previous years or so. Um, and her goal is to create meals made from fresh and natural ingredients that promote wellness and a fine dining experience. So that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Afis. Hello, how are you today? So today I have a very interesting recipe. I'm going to start with my acorn. This is the acorn squash. I'm going to cut it in half and then bake it for 40 minutes. So it's a little bit tough to cut it. But you see, oh my goodness, that's a tough one. So inside it has seeds. So we're gonna take the seeds out. We're going to add some olive oil and just put it around it. And we are going to bake it for 40 minutes, 375, until this gets soft. Of course, I've done my homework. So I have for you ready-made the <laughs> baked squash so we don't lose any time. <laughs> the magic of technology. <laughs> So this is the baked squash. It's really soft. And uh, something you're supposed to know about this. This is very sweet inside. So I do not recommend it for people who have uh, diabetes too, or they don't need too much sugar, or they are diabetic. It's not recommended. But what you can eat, if you're really craving for this squash, you can eat the outside. Because it's edible, it's very soft and it's full of vitamins b2 and b12 it's a really good um edible uh, vegetable to have even if you have diabetes so i'm going to scoop i hope you can see what i'm doing i'm scooping this I scooped some of it out and uh, I have my rice, oh, sorry. <laughs> and I'm gonna put some rice in it. And then put that in, mix it a little bit put some uh, olive oil, some extra olive oil. Add some salt and pepper. Add some cumin. Add some garlic powder. You can also add uh, fresh garlic, which I love. But for this video, I just add garlic powder. Gar fresh garlic is the best to do in a, a recipe. Shafi, what kind of rice are you using? So I'm using a um, brown rice because it has a lot of fiber and it's a uh, great in taste. It's not like the white rice. You don't taste much and it has less uh, uh, sugars in. So it's, it's a good rice uh, to eat. The, the wild rice is good too. It's a little bit tougher. And it's a different taste. So I use the brown rice. So I do that. I mix it well. At this point, I can add some kefir inside. So 
kefir is something like yogurt. It's this stuff. You can find it in the market as a yogurt or as a milk. So it looks like yogurt, but it has a different kind of uh, bacteria in, which are very good for you. And they are a probiotic. It's one of the most strong probiotic uh, yogurt you can find in the market. So I have some of that. <clears throat> okay. And I'm gonna bake it for around uh, uh, 10 minutes just to get a nice uh, um, a nice uh, feeling of it of course that's how I have it baked <laughs> for you guys magic so this is the baked acorn I'm gonna leave it here meantime we have the chicken breast which I'm going to cut I hope you can see two portions of it Unless, it, unless it's a small chicken. So for the marinade for the chicken, I put some of the kefir. So I have olive oil. And again, I have my spices. Paprika, cumin, cinnamon, I mean, not cinnamon, garlic. <laughs> so I have the spices. And I'm gonna make a very nice uh, marinade for the chicken. I'm gonna put it on the chicken. Keep it for two hours in the refrigerator. As you can see, I put it on the chicken. It smells so good, I have to tell you, cumin and paprika smells so good and it makes the food more uh, enticing. You know, you want to eat it even like that. Uh, the kefir, you can actually eat it at this point, and it's very good. So, and I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for two hours, and then bake it for 20 minutes. So, this is my baked chicken, and I baked it for 20 minutes. It's nice and soft, and I have that. So, I'm gonna make my uh, plate. I'm gonna plate the whole thing and uh, at this point let me get the plate chefy yes that was a very large chicken breast correct that you just have yes i got in two yes okay but it was just one large chicken breast and you cooked it for 20 minutes did you put olive oil in the pan yes uh, oh no i put it in the oven for 20 minutes Okay. On a uh, 4400 and uh, with uh, some olive oil on top, always extra olive oil. That's because I'm Greek. <laughs> the <laughs> Americans don't put so much olive oil, but I love the olive oil, so I put some extra. So I bake it in the oven uh, for uh, uh, 20 minutes on 400. So I need it to bake really on the outside, but also make sure that it's baked inside. The chicken breast. Maybe I didn't make that clear. It's half a chicken breast of a chicken. But yes. this was a big chicken. <laughs> so I cut it in half. So this is a fourth of a whole chicken breast. And it was a skinless and boneless breast. Yes, exactly. And you can actually do this recipe with uh, chicken thighs. You can do it uh, with... Um, um, with some kind uh, of other meat. You can do it with pork if you like. But I just feel that the chicken, uh, it's the most basic food and it goes through the system um, really well for somebody who takes care of their health or for somebody who um, has some illness or something. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand what I mean. Yes. Uh -huh. We have a very... Big Greek accent. <laughs> so, so we got our chicken breast right here. I'm gonna cut it a little bit so we have nice, nice slices. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So 
So this is the chicken breast. So onto it, I'm going to add some more of that kefir because we did have the kefir on the chicken while cooking. But uh, uh, when the kefir is on at room temperature, uh, that's what you, when you get the full power of its bacteria and its probiotic. Once you cook it, it's just tasteful for the chicken. So in order to get the best of the kefir, you have to eat it at room temperature. So, and I add some of that here. A little bit of olive oil. And I'm going to add my acorn. And on that, the same thing. It's really nice to add some more kefir sauce on top. And once you start eating it, you're gonna mix it and it bite by bite. It's it, truthfully, it's a really nice recipe. It's uh, sweet and it's uh, good for you. It has a lot of vitamins. And uh, don't just uh, eat the rice, eat the skin of the acorn. It's really tasty. It's a very tasty skin. So uh, also what you can do is get some more of that kefir. Okay. I'm gonna add some water to it. Because it's thick. So I added some water. You can see the consistency here. In it, I'm gonna add exactly the same spices as before, but be, be free to add any spices you like. Be free to add fresh herbs. So this right here, it's an excellent um, dressing for a salad that can go with that dish. So you see how the consistency is? This is the dressing of any salad that you add. You can add some lettuce salad, you can add some tomato salad, cabbage, it goes very nice with the cabbage. Uh, it's very tasty and it's good for you. <laughs> Thank you, Shafi. I I noticed that you can eat the acorn squash skin. I never knew that. Oh yeah, I it's never very knew tasty. That. It's very tasty. Um, we have a question: if if someone were to use pork instead of chicken, would you change the flavors or the seasonings, or would it change the flavor of the pork? I would definitely uh, add some oregano to it. I think the oregano would go really nice to it. And if it's pork, I would think not of a, of a steak, like a, a steak pork, but more like a schnitzel pork. So- Schnitzel, what did you say? A schnitzel, you know, like a very thin slice of pork where I can marinate it and then use it. But I would definitely put some uh, oregano or thyme, if you like one of those, yes. How about with fish? Uh, so for me, I don't like to mix dairy with the fish. Uh, again, because I'm Greek and uh, they don't mix those two together. Um, if you've seen some dairy, I haven't seen any dairy mixed for, uh, for a fish. Definitely you can have, <clears throat> the acorn uh, with the kefir inside and then have the fish outside, but not uh, with that marinade. One, one suggestion I, I would have for the fish is that fish cooks faster than other animal proteins like red meat or chicken or something. Typically oh, yeah. uh, in a fish, if you're marinating it, if you were to use something citrus like lemon or something, that might yeah goes well in even in the marination. What you can do is use the salad, uh, uh, the cucumber as a dressing or something. Once you're done cooking it, then if somebody who doesn't mind mixing the dairy with the fish, 
they can have it as their topping or something along with the fish, but not necessarily for um, marinating purpose. The purpose of also the kefir is, is, is that it makes it softer. It makes it cook faster too because of the bacteria and the lactic acid in it. Um, and then once the fish is already, you know, it's faster to cook, you don't have to make the two items together. Good. That's helpful to know. Are, are there questions from the group? I muted you all, you can unmute. Uh, I would add a comment at this because I forgot. Uh, I use a lot of lemons uh, in any recipe because I like lemon and it's very alkaline for my system. So uh, definitely you can go ahead and add some lemon in the dressing or add some lemon on top of that uh, acorn or some lemon on top of that chicken. It goes really, really nice. How about on a baked potato? Oh yeah, definitely. You could add some more uh, cheeses into it to make it more creamy and then putting that on top, it's amazing. Also, because I had it and I love Mexican food, instead of putting sour cream, add some kefir, it's amazing. It's creamy and it's wholesome and it's a, a good taste. Great, someone else asked, the lemon will be okay with the kefir, it won't make it curdle? No, no, because at had. this point, at this point, it will make it curdle, but at this point, you have a lot of olive oil inside. So the olive oil kind of covers the, uh, the kefir, uh, it insulates it in a, in a sense, it insulates the kefir. So any lemon you put is just gonna make it just a little bit watery. Other questions? I think we think of Greek food as healthy. I, I do and fresh and uh, can you speak about using natural ingredients in the food? You mentioned oregano and thyme and I know we have access to a lot here in California, but what about dried herbs versus fresh herbs? So uh, if you live in a village or if you live somewhere out there and you cannot get fresh herbs, of course you dry them and you uh, get that. But uh, I know that if you have fresh herbs, uh, it's better to use them fresh. You get the full power of their uh, um, uh, the small vitamins and all that that they have, and the minerals, of course. Uh, I read, uh, I wrote a book about the edible wild greens, and because I was taught that way by my grandmother, going out in the fields and just picking up anything that it's green. Well, you have to know your greens to begin with. Mm -hmm. So every time I go out hiking. I will pick up uh, thyme, oregano, dill, uh, fennel. California is full of fennel. If you like licorice, you can do so many things with the fennel that is out there. So uh, I love that. The greens are the most important. The other important thing about a dish is to have color. So to have green, to have red, to have yellow. You don't want a dish that is all beige or white because that's what you see in the American cuisine sometimes. So here you have that. Add some bell peppers, add some tomato, add some leeks, add, add some, um, uh, what you call, beets. Beets are beautiful. So every time, start a recipe, follow the recipe as the book says, but add green, red, yellow, so that it looks good and it's gonna be good for yourself at the end. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Chef Epi? I guess we use our own judgment on how much rice we need and- um, Yes. I think In that would be based on the size of the squash, right? Exactly, because for this squash, which was kind of big, I used a full cup of uh, uh, rice, uncooked rice. So it was uh, almost uh, 
one cup and three fourths cooked. Mm -hmm. uh, for the other recipe, for this little squash, of course, I'm gonna use much less. And maybe you should try the little squashes because it's, a, a, see the difference? It's a, a big difference in between those two. Now, if you make that, you can cut it in half and share it. And then the other, you can refrigerate it and uh, you can actually freeze it. Though I do not recommend that because I like fresh food. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it looked like you used a pinch of cumin and a pinch of paprika on the yes. chicken. And a pinch yes. of cumin. Oh, and garlic powder on the chicken. Yes. And as I said, I used garlic powder just for the sake of this video. Um, I usually use fresh garlic. Uh, it's good for you. And also if you marinate the garlic, you can eat it uh, right ahead. And uh, when I make tzatziki, you know, it's a Greek dish. Uh, it's uh, a yogurt and um, cucumber and olive oil and garlic. So for the tzatziki, I also use the kefir because I like it. it. Makes me feel good in the inside. So in fact, I use fresh garlic and it makes a whole of difference. It really does. And uh, it's fresh raw garlic. It's very important. Like if you have a cold or if you don't feel so good or uh, if you ate too much or if you feel like something is coming, just eat a uh, raw garlic. Uh, but marinate it in something like yogurt. Otherwise, it tastes awful, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, too, from someone, would you use, um, if you're using fresh garlic, would you mince it? Would you use a paste? What would you use? Uh, yeah, a paste would be good because you want it to blend inside the kefir. So a paste is good. Or a, a crushed garlic in very, very small pieces. Or if you have that uh, crusher, the garlic crusher, you can use that too. Mm -hmm. Yes. So once you, once you bake the garlic, uh, certain uh, minerals are gone. And uh, so you do ne need some of its minerals. So if you check out, I, I think the nutritionist more, knows more about garlic than I do. And I keep forgetting about the oil that garlic has inside. Mm -hmm. um, which is the, the factor that it's nutrition for you. Any, thank you, Chef Effie. Are there any more questions before we close? Um, this has been great. It makes me wanna go eat some kefir and make this dish at home. Exactly. I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen just so you have Chef Effie's contact information if you want to reach out to her separately or look up her book on edible wild greens. Um, she has a favorite quote, which I'll share at the end. And um, are there any other questions from the group? Okay, well, thank you all for being here. Uh, one of Effie's favorite quotes is we should look for someone to eat and drink with before looking for something to eat and drink. And this is a good reminder of having community and building community, which is what we hope the, these sessions help do. So thank you all for being here today. Um, thank you. It's been fun. Thank you so much. It's been fun and I hope you follow that uh, recipe. And uh, I'll